In this video, we will be determining the general solution of the equation d square y by dx square minus 3 dy by dx plus 2y is equal to e raised to the power 3x. Now, let me tell you that there are some very important concepts ahead and so I request you to make notes while you watch this video so that you can revise them later and if you have any doubt, you can get back to this video and maybe your notes and clear your doubts. So, the question is to solve this particular equation. Now, the general solution for this, these types of equations as we have seen in earlier videos is y is equal to cf plus pi where cf is the complementary function and pi is the particular integral. Now, we have to determine the complementary function for this equation and the particular integral for this equation and we'll have the solution. Firstly, we have a very, very important step. We'll have to change the way this equation is written. So, we'll write given equation is d square y by dx square minus 3 dy by dx plus 2y is equal to e raised to the power 3x. Let us name this equation as equation number 1. And now, what I'll be doing is, I will be replacing d by dx with capital D. So what will I get then? That is what will equation 1 become? Equation 1 will become d square y minus 3dy plus 2y is equal to e raised to the power 3x. And over here, the d that I mentioned is equal to d by dx. Since the first term over here was d square y by dx square, it will become capital D square y. The second term over here was minus 3 dy by dx. So it will become minus 3 dy plus 2y. So simply it's written as 2y since there's no d by dx in the third term over here is equal to e raised to the power 3x. Now what I'll do is I will take y as common from the three terms on the left hand side. That is from d square y minus 3 dy plus 2y I will take y as common. So, we will get d square minus 3d plus 2 inside the bracket and then at the outside we will get y is equal to e raised to the power 3x. Now, let us call this particular equation as equation number 2. Now, we will compare this equation number 2 with this equation that is given in front of you. Function of d, y is equal to qx. That is f of d y is equal to qx. Over here, if we compare them, we see that function of d, f of d is equal to d square minus 3d plus 2 and qx is equal to a function of x that is on the right hand side and that will be equal to over here, you can see e raised to the power 3x. Now, we always have to convert that particular equation that we are trying to solve in this particular form. That is, f of d, y is equal to qx. Before we move on to calculating, the complementary function and the particular integral. So now since we have this particular equation in the form of f of dy is equal to qx, we can move on to finding complementary function and particular integral so that we can get the solution. Now before we begin, we have a small request to you. 99% of people who watch our channel aren't subscribed to our channel. So if you are new to our channel and if you appreciate our work and our work, our videos are helpful to you, please consider subscribing because it really is helpful and motivates us to keep making good content for everyone out there. So thank you and let's move on to the calculation of complementary function. So to calculate the complementary function, we will need to write the auxiliary equation for this equation. What is this auxiliary equation? Auxiliary equation is basically obtained by equating f of d, that is function of d, to 0. So, what we will do is we will put f of d is equal to 0 and the equation that we will get will be the auxiliary equation. So, over here function of d is d square minus 3d plus 2 is equal to 0. And this right here is our auxiliary equation. Now, we will be solving this auxiliary equation to obtain the roots of this auxiliary equation. And for that, I will be replacing capital D by small m because it better represents the roots. So therefore, we will be getting our auxiliary equation as m square minus 3m plus 2 is equal to 0. 
Now this over here we can see if we want to solve it and we want to obtain the roots for this equation, we need to identify the type of equation. So this is an equation which is called as a quadratic equation and we can very easily solve it and we will be doing that but before that if you do not know what a quadratic equation is and how to solve it, there is already a video made in our channel specially dedicated to solving of a quadratic equation with an example and with also some concepts so you can refer to that video the link will be in the description so let's move on to solving this particular quadratic equation so m square minus m minus 2m plus 2 is equal to 0 so nothing much we're just trying to solve this quadratic equation by a method called factorizing and that is already explained in the video that I was talking about earlier. So you will get m square minus m minus 2m plus 2 is equal to 0. I have just simply expanded minus 3m and I have written it as minus m minus 2m. Now I will have to take m as common from the first two terms and 2 as common from the last two terms of this particular equation so we'll get m into m minus 1 and m minus 1 over here is inside the brackets minus of 2 m minus 1 again after 2 m minus 1 is in the inside the bracket is equal to 0 so now we can see that we can get the roots very easily after further solving we will get m minus 2 m minus 1 is equal to 0 and that means that the two roots that we obtained are 1 and 2 so let us name the roots as m1 and m2 where m1 is equal to 1 m2 is equal to 2 and these are the roots for the auxiliary equation that we obtained for that particular differential equation we are trying to solve over here so the roots m1 and m2 are 1 and 2 and over here we can very clearly identify the type of root so basically what i'm trying to say is that you have to identify the type of root after you have solved the auxiliary equation so the roots that you've obtained are they real are they imaginary are the pair of roots different from each other or are they equal and on the basis of that we determine the formula for complementary function it's already known to us the formula for complementary function for different cases when the roots obtained are real or equal or real and different so we have certain combinations so in this particular case we can see that the roots are 1 and 2 both of these numbers are real and also different from each other 1 and 2 are different from each other so if we are supposed to find the complementary function for a particular equation where the auxiliary equation when solved give us real and different roots then the formula for the complementary function will be cf is equal to c1 e raised to the power m1x plus c2 e raised to the power m2x so c1 and c2 are constants over here x has to be simply just it's x it has to be there as it is cf over here stands for complementary function m1 and m2 are the places where you have to put the value of the roots that you've obtained so the cf is equal to c1 e raised to the power m1x plus c2 e raised to the power m2x is only applicable for the roots when the roots are real and different so over here we can see that the roots were 1 and 2 both the values are real and different only then will you be able to apply this formula to find the complementary function so you will be getting if you substitute and put the values of m1 and m2 in this particular formula for real and different roots you will get your cf is equal to c1 e raised to the power 1x that is i've simply put 1 in place of m1 because m1 is 1 m1 is equal to 1 and further we have plus c2 e raised to the power m2x again i'll write 2 in place of m2 because the second root was 2 that is m2 is equal to 2 so the one thing that you're seeing in front of you is complementary function and that is it you don't need to further solve it or anything cf is equal to c1 e raised to the power x plus c2 e raised to the power 2x so we have completed the first part of our question that is finding the complementary function now we need to find out the pi that is the particular integral for this question so to calculate the particular integral we have a formula so over here f of d is function of d qx is function of x and we have already 
determined it uh, we simply have to put the value of f of d function of d and qx in this formula so let us see what we will be obtaining pi is equal to 1 by d square minus 3d plus 2 that is our function of d f of d dot qx qx over here is e raised to the power 3x now, do you think this is your answer this is your particular integral value no this is not the value what you have to do over here is you have to solve this d square minus 3d plus 2 and when you have such an exponential qx that is the function of x is exponential e raised to the power something we can say e raised to the power ax so in that case how do you find the particular integral in that case when you have qx in the form of e raised to the power ax you simply have to replace the capital d with a that is you have to put d is equal to a provided provided that the function of d does not equal to zero so that is when you put that particular value of a in place of d in this place of f of d function of d you should not obtain zero and if you do obtain zero that is a different case that has to be solved a little different so that will be discussed in a separate video but in this particular case what we have to do is we have to try putting d is equal to a and we have to see if f of d function of d is equal to zero or not so let us see if we put d is equal to three because in this case a e raised to the power ax a over here is three e raised to the power 3x so when we put d is equal to 3 we get pi is equal to 1 divided by 3 square minus 3 into 3 plus 2 e raised to the power 3x on further solving we will obtain 9 minus 9 plus 2 in the place of f of d where we had substituted d is equal to 3 okay and we have to keep e raised to the power 3x along with the solution we don't have to remove it we have to keep it there so we get pi is equal to 1 by 2 e raised to the power 3x and that is your answer that is the value of particular integral for this equation and so we have finally arrived to the complete solution for this equation for this question so the solution as i said general solution is given by y is equal to cf plus pi we know the value of cf that is c1 e raised to the power x plus c2 e raised to the power 2x and we know the value of particular integral 1 by 2 e raised to the power 3x that can be written as e raised to the power 3x by 2 so now we simply have to put the value of cf and pi in this equation for general solution y is equal to cf plus pi so we get the answer that is a general solution for the given question as y is equal to c1 e raised to the power x plus c2 e raised to the power 2x plus e raised to the power 3x by 2 and this is our answer so thanks for watching and thanks for choosing to click on this video we hope that this video was helpful to you and we'll see you in the next video.